When you're analyzing a company's financial statements, you definitely want to perform vertical analysis. So vertical analysis has to do with making common size financial statements, specifically a common size income statement and a common size balance sheet. So what is the common size income statement? It's a really, really helpful tool, and I hope you get familiar with it because I use it a lot when I look at financials. So basically, you just take each item on the income statement and express it as a percentage of total sales. So let's say you've got cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold might be 42% of sales. You got SG&A. You got R&D. You got advertising. Every company's different, right? A service provider isn't going to have cost of goods sold and so forth. But you have each one expressed as a percentage of total sales. Sales. It's really helpful in terms of, uh, for example, assessing a company's ability to manage costs. What if you see cost of goods sold was 42% of sales a few years ago, and then it went up to 45% of sales, and then 48, and you're wondering, well, what's going on here? Is the company, are the suppliers increasing prices, or what's happening? And you can also compare that 42 or 45, 48% of sales uh, that the cost of goods sold represents to that of a competitor's cost of goods sold as a percentage of sales. I'm going to show you that in a minute with Home Depot and Lowe's. But before I get to that, just quickly, the common size balance sheet, each item is expressed as a percentage of total assets. So let's look at some actual financials. Okay, so we've got Home Depot here. Okay, so we've got Home Depot, and I've got four years of data, and then I've got four years of uh, data for the same years for Lowe's. Okay, so we've got two companies that compete with one another, and we've got sales right here. So we've got sales. So in 2019 uh, fiscal year, Home Depot did $110 billion in sales because these numbers are in millions. So what we have here is each line item is going to be expressed as a percentage of sales. So let's take cost of goods sold, $72 billion. Okay, $72 billion. Now, why is this useful? Well, Lowe's cost of goods sold was $49 billion. So which company is doing a better job managing its cost of goods sold? You might say, well, uh, Lowe's is a lot lower than that of Home Depot, so Lowe's is doing a better job. It's getting better prices from its suppliers. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. Home Depot, if you look at sales, it's a $110 billion company in 2019. Lowe's is just a $72 billion company. So Home Depot is a lot larger so it's selling more products. So wouldn't we expect it to have a higher cost of goods sold? So what we really want to do is look, we need to scale cost of goods sold by something. And we can scale it by total sales. So we've got 65.9% of sales is cost of goods sold. And then for lows, 68.2%. So that's a difference of 2.3 percentage points. And you say, well, what's 2.3 percentage points? Well, if we're talking about $110 billion, it's quite a bit, right? It's a couple of billion. So we can see that Home Depot, at least when it comes to this specific cost, cost of goods sold, happens to be doing a better job managing its cost of goods sold than Lowe's. Now, why is that the case? Is it that Home Depot is getting better prices from its suppliers than Lowe's is? Or is it that Home Depot is doing a better job managing things like shrinkage, right? Shrinkage is like theft or, you know, some the inventory is basically decreasing, uh, you know, so, you know, maybe some uh, some employees took home some plywood with them. So in any event, somehow we know that cost of goods sold as a percentage of sales is significantly lower for Home Depot than it is for Lowe's. Now, let's take a look at SG&A. So SG&A, again, we see it's larger for Home Depot than it is for Lowe's. But remember, Home Depot is a larger company. We expect it to have more SG&A. So SG&A is a percentage of sales, 17.9%, and Lowe's, 21.3% for 2019. So, and if you look, there's a pattern. Over time, this is pretty consistent for Home Depot, right around 18%, whereas Lowe's is in the low 20s. So consistently, consistently, Home Depot is doing a better job managing its SG&A, which SG&A includes a lot of you know, people's salaries and, and so forth. Okay, so SG, or Home Depot is doing a better job managing its SG&A costs. You can also look at depreciation and amortization. You can look, we can go to every line item and express it as a percentage of sales. Now, just so you make sure you understand what I say as a percentage of sales, let's just take a look at the formula here. So cost of goods sold, we've got divided by sales, and then we have SG&A. When we look at SG&A, it's divided by sales. See how we go up from top down? We basically, everything, so right here, this is this divided by this, okay? And then the SG&A is SG&A divided by this. As we go, and then depreciation, this divided by this. That's why we call it vertical analysis. We're going top down to make these calculations. Now, I didn't express, 
Uh, there, there was an impairment for Home Depot uh, during one of the years. I didn't express that as a percentage of sales. You absolutely could. And I didn't express any of the non-operating items as a percentage of sales. I just, personal preference, but in a true common size income statement, every single line item would be expressed as a percentage of sales. Okay. Now, when it comes to taxes, we've got tax expense. I prefer, I have the effective tax rate. Okay, so I have the effective tax rate here. And so you can see H27 divided by H24. So I've got the income tax expense divided by uh, the earnings uh, before uh, income taxes. Okay, so I got the effective tax rate, 23.6%. So I did not take the tax expense as a percentage of sales. I felt it made more sense to look at the effective tax rate. And you see it drop significantly here. If you're just wondering what happened, uh, it was the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. So there's new regulation in the U.S. Re reduced the corporate income tax rate. So uh, I like to, again, you know, the common size income statement is helping us compare these, these two. We can see over time, you know, Home Depot cost of goods sold, the percentage of sales been pretty stable. Uh, and Lowe's, um, it's it's gone up a little bit. It went up 66.7% to 68.2. So it's getting getting worse uh, for Lowe's. So you can see trends over time, but you can also compare between two companies. Now, let me show you the common size balance sheet for these companies. So I use common size income statements a lot because, again, it shows you uh, it's a good way to see how is the company doing in terms of managing its costs. But we can also get the common size balance sheet. Common size balance sheet is everything expressed as a percentage of total assets. So we've got here, uh, for example, 2019, uh, Home Depot, 28.4% of their total assets were inventory. Okay, so inventory was 28% of their total assets. Now, uh, for Lowe's, it was a higher percentage, 33%. So five percentage points higher. Now you might say, well, why does this matter? Who cares what percentage uh, the inventory is of total assets? Well, these are a couple of retailers, but let's say we're talking about like technology companies. If you see over time that for a technology company, maybe inventory was 30% uh, of uh, assets, then it was 35, then 42, then 50, and you're like, whoa, inventory is really becoming a higher percentage of the company's assets. It might not be a bad thing, but it also might mean there's issues with obsolescence and maybe some of that inventory is obsolete and needs to be written off. That happens sometimes with, with technology companies. Okay, so the common size balance sheet can be useful too. Now, some people, so I've got, and this is common, uh, where they have every single line item as a percentage of total assets. That's how I've done it here. So you see payables as a percentage of total assets. Everything is a percentage of total assets. Some people, when they get to the liability uh, section, so they will have the liabilities expressed as a percentage of total liabilities. So you, you might see that as well. They might have like long-term debt. Here I have it as 56% of total assets. Uh, so you see that actually, you know, in terms of leverage, um, you know, uh, Home Depot is more highly leveraged than, than Lowe's significantly. But some people might prefer to say, well, I want to see uh, long-term debt as a percentage of total liabilities. And then I've got the equity accounts here as well. So that's vertical analysis. Again, we, we've got our total assets. Okay, so total assets for, happen to be $51 billion uh, for 2019 for Home Depot. So then everything here, cash, receivables, uh, inventory, everything's expressed as a percentage of that 51 billion for 2019. And so we're just going from top down making these calculations and just like we did with the common size income statement. So that's why people call it vertical analysis.